green screen. Before we get anywhere, let's talk about what is 3D printing. Let's say you want to manufacture some part in some material. I'm going to vastly generalize here and say there's two different ways you can do this. With additive manufacturing, where you build up the material to make your part, or with subtractive manufacturing, where you take away the material. Uh, the statue David, subtractive manufacturing out of marble. The Great Pyramids of Giza, limestone, additive manufacturing. You get the picture. So I like to think of 3D printing as computerized additive manufacturing. The computer will take a 3D model and change it into instructions that your machine and extruder can understand. Then the machine runs the extruder in a certain path to build your object. Generally, this is done by building it up layer by layer. Generally speaking though, I find 3D printing not to be a great descriptor because when you see things like 3D printing a house, you can imagine like this giant printer and it shoots out a house, but really it's like stacking layers of concrete really slowly. One important thing to note is you shouldn't equate your desktop 3D printing with 3D printing the field of study as a whole, because it's really just one small part. Desktop 3D printing has only really been popularized in the last 10 years or so, while 3D printing the concepts has been around since like the 80s. People have been trying different bonding methods and materials and extruders for a long time now. Let's talk about the different types of 3D printing. So the most common desktop 3D printing and probably the type you have is FDM, which stands for Fused Deposition Modeling. The machine takes the material, some plastic, and the bonding method, heat, and uses it to build layer upon layer to make a fun little object. But there are so many different types of 3D printing. SLA is another type you'll see, and it stands for Stereolithography Apparatus. Basically, it uses resin and UV light to build its layers. Actually, the first commercialized 3D printer and a lot of the first patents were for SLA machines. The first commercialized 3D printer was an SLA, and they creatively named it the SLA-1. There's a lot more. There's evil people trying to print with human tissue to make organ, which is absolutely insane and I'm ready for it. I would be amiss to talk about desktop 3D printing and not mention rip wrap, which is not rip wrap or riff wrap. The rip wrap project was started in 2005 in England at the University of Bath. It was started by this guy named Adrian Bowyer, but he's actually been knighted since then, so I'm gonna choose to call him Sir Adrian Bowyer. I'll try to explain this story based off what I've read online in interviews. So basically, the University of Bath decides to buy some 3D printers. They cost $50,000 each because it's like the early 2000s and nobody has these things except like universities and industry. Sir Adrian Bowyer sees that the original patents are expiring on these things and is like, this new manufacturing process is pretty versatile. I bet you we could build machines that build themselves. Oh, also, I wanna make this open source because I want it to be accessible to everyone, not just university and industry. So he writes a paper, gets a small grant, and starts working on it. Soon though, word gets out, and all these nerds start emailing him, and they say things like, Dear Mr. Sir Bowyer, please let me help with your project. I love the manufacturing and other things. And he's like, yeah, totally. And soon there's kind of this community around this project. So the Rip Rap project actually was working on a couple different ideas, but the one that happened to really take off was this kind of low cost 3D printing. It got to the point where people could build their own 3D printers in their home based off the designs that they had made. So Sir Adrian Bowyer is like, yo, I should start my own company selling kits of this or something. So he starts Rip Rap Pro, which doesn't really go anywhere because by the time he joins the market, there's so many people already making 3D printers and 3D printing kits, kind of based off the work that he's done. Kind of like in the early 2010s, all these companies started popping up. There's MakerBot, Ultimaker, Lulzbot, our boy Prusa's back, and he's decided to make everything orange. I just don't understand it. And based off what I've read, I don't know if I can claim that the Rip Rap started desktop 3D printing single-handedly, but it was definitely hugely influential. Okay, but enough boring history. Let's get back to your 3D printer. Why should you be excited about a machine that kind of just prints plastic parts for no reason? This new market of low-cost desktop 3D printers is allowing people to have access to the kind of stuff that didn't before. Like, I'm a pretty average nerd, but I didn't go to school for engineering, so I could have gone my whole life without knowing the joy of modeling something in CAD and then like having it there right in front of you. So say it together, everyone. Accessibility. It's 2020, baby. Future is now, I am ready. I can create whatever I want on the computer and then actualize it in real life. And it's not that hard anymore. Like, what does this mean? This software printing isn't magic. People can find it to be pretty intimidating and I can understand why. But with like a little bit of effort, 
you can start creating some pretty cool stuff. And I think that's pretty cool. Follow your dreams, shoot for the stars. The future is now, the robot apocalypse is here. Uh, believe in yourself.